All right. Let's recap here. This is a, a 1970 Land Rover Series 2 that my sister and her late husband bought new. And it lived most of its life out on her farm. And um, over the years, the drivetrain got to be really horrible. And so I was going to replace the front axle in it. And I thought, man, I do not want to learn how to fix a Land Rover front axle. So I bought one on eBay. And as it turned out, it was a right-hand drive front axle. And it was also off of a 109. This particular vehicle is an 88. Uh, so I had to modify the axle uh, of the front hubs and everything to accept different steering arms and now my latest problem is that the 109 brakes are different from the original 88 brakes um there are two cylinders as opposed to one they're really better brakes probably but um they don't exactly work on here. And one of the problems is when you get the uh, backing plate and everything all assembled, uh, as I have here with the new uh, wheel cylinders and a uh, bridge pipe going from the top to the bottom, and you go to mount them and you realize that to get the hoses and everything to work that the bleeder is on the bottom. It faces down when installed on the car. You will never, ever get these brakes to bleed with the bleeder down. So I decided I was going to come up with a system that allows me to invert the backing plate, which involves getting the hose connection from what is now going to be the bottom of the backing plate up to the top of the backing plate. And also we will then have the bleeder here with the orange cap on it up at the top where the air can actually come out of the system. So to make all this work, I'm building a, what you might call a jumper pipe that's going to come from what's now the bottom of the backing plate up to the top and it's going to have a nut on it to attach to the brake hoses. So the next problem that I run into is that the brake hose from the 88 has this type of fitting on the end that's made to go straight into the wheel cylinder and I'm not going to be doing that. Um, I'm going to be coming from my cheater pipe up to an acorn nut that I got from an out outfit called fedhill.com, F-E-D-H-I-L-L.com. And it won't attach to this end of the brake hose. It doesn't work properly. It needs to be a flare type fitting like is on this end of the brake hose. So I went searching for a brake hose with two male flare ends on it and didn't have much luck until a good friend at Abacus Racing turned me on to an XKE front brake hose that has the appropriate male flare fitting on both ends. It's 3H inch national standard fine and it's flare as you can see. So I'm going to build myself a little bracket to attach here on the top of the brake backing plate that this acorn nut will come up to and go on to this flare fitting that will then go off to the car. A hydraulic brake flaring tool like this one is invaluable on a project like this. Anyway, another cool tool is this uh, Harbor Freight brake line forming tool. It uh, really helps.
and it lets you make nice curves in the brake line. So this is what we end up with. My cheater pipe coming around here, it's going to come off the bottom of the brake backing plate up to the top where I've welded a small bracket to hold the E-type brake hose. I had to do some finagling with this uh, bend right here because I have to keep it out of the way of where the hub is going to bolt to the back. I'll try and do a prettier job on the next one. But it accomplishes what we set out to accomplish. Here's my uh, female, I'm sorry, male, I get those mixed up, male uh, flare fitting on this end. Again, thanks to Bob at Abacus Racing for hooking me up with this cable. He actually offered to give me a couple that he had on the shelf up there. But uh, they're great guys. If you need a car restored, old British car taken care of, they're the people to do it.